Number, uh, chapter 30, please. Now when Rachel saw that she bore Jacob no children, she became jealous of her sister, and she said to Jacob, Give me children or else I die. Well, I got to tell you, she obviously doesn't understand the whole <laughs> having children concept. You know, whatever Jacob was doing with her, she wasn't figuring out that this isn't working. You see what I'm saying? She just is like, give me children or I'm going to die. And he's like, go ahead and read the next one. And you'll see his answer. It's the most obvious answer in the world. Then Jacob's anger burned against Rachel. And he said, am I in the place of God? Who has withheld from you the fruit of the womb? He's like, it's not me, baby. You know, your sister's doing pretty good. This is from the Lord, and it's not from me. I mean, it's just so apparent when you read it. But y you can see her distress, but she's not thinking this one clearly through. And she's blaming somebody that she shouldn't be blaming as if he's done anything wrong. I mean, it's not like she wasn't in there in, in, in the tent with him. You see what I'm saying? It's just the whole thing there is just very hard for us to look at and say, What's she thinking? You know, I mean. Yeah, we're still doing the same. Thing. I know we do it all the time. Learn Absolutely. Oh boy. Okay, verse two. Go ahead. What's that? How many kings were unhappy because they weren't born a son? Yeah. Yeah. Blaming blaming the wife because they have a daughter instead of a son. Yeah, it's the Lord that determines these things, and I mean, it's just simply not. Uh, uh, oh boy. Anyway, go ahead. Verse uh, verse three. Here is my maid, Bilhah, go into her, and she, that she may bear on my knees, that though through her I may have children. Okay, or that she may be built up, meaning build a family through me. And as she says, she's going to have a child on her knees. She literally would sit on Rachel's knees as she was having her child, and so it was signifying that Rachel is the mother. You're my property. You're having this baby in my stead. And so they would literally hold on to each other and bear in that way. So it's kind of interesting to think about. But yeah, unbelievable. That's just the way they did it. And, you know, they didn't, I guess we deliver laying on our backs is the way, you know. They do some of the standing. Oh, do they? Because that was the standard way is they would actually just bend down to have their babies. They and still do that in, like in third world countries. Yeah, and I don't know why we do it the way we do it here. I don't know if it's easier for the doctor. Or... Oh, do they? Yeah, I mean, anytime I see something on the, on the TV, it's always some lady laying on her back and they got 15 people rushing around and stat, emergency, and you know. Doctors doesn't make it a bit easier. Oh, okay. See, I don't know these things, but, huh. Oh, boy. Ouch. Ouch. Okay, verse 4. So she gave him her maid, Bilhah, as a wife, and Jacob went into her. And so now he's got three problems. He doesn't have just one. He's got three of them. Oh, boy. And Bilhah conceived and bore Jacob a son. Okay, now before you go on, does anybody know what significance Bilhah is going to have later. We're going to read it in a few verses or maybe maybe in another chapter or two. If not, I don't want to get into it, but if you know right offhand. Okay, we won't get into it. All right, um, verse 6. Then Rachel said, God has vindicated me and has indeed heard my voice and has given me a son, and therefore she means her And what does Dan mean? Judge. 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 He is judged between us and has vindicated me. This is judgment between the two of us. Where else is the name Dan mentioned in the Bible? Daniel. Daniel. Dan, what is E? The I shows possession. Okay, Dan, E, my, and then L. Yeah, God is my judge. L, God, E is possessive, and then Dan, God is my judge. So that's, and you'll see other Dans throughout the Bible, but anyway, that is where the name comes from, all right? It's to judge. All right. So she has said, he has judged my case and has vindicated me. Okay, verse, and he's ha just whipping out children in these verses, but there's probably, you know, 12 years difference between them all, somewhere around that. But it seems like he's just really whipping them out. But uh, anyway, go ahead, verse 7. <laughs> Which means the wrestlings of God, Naphtali, my wrestlings with God, okay? So uh, anyway, that's what's going on there, and they're stating their children's names 
from the context of their own lives. And this is what people did. Somebody, I don't know if it was in this class or if it was in uh, the, the Saturday night class, but somebody said, did they always know what the names meant? Yes, unlike us where we just give children names and sometimes we know and sometimes we don't, they had a plan and a purpose for the names of their children, always. There was no, well, what is your name? And if you go to Japan today, people will have the same name, but it will be spelled differently based on the Chinese characters. And it might mean, you know, Yuki, uh, snowy day in autumn or something, you know, or it might mean blue shoe, I don't know, whatever. But um, uh, they will carry these dictionaries around and they will say, well, what's your name? My name's Yuki. Well, my name's Yuki too. How do you spell that? And then they get out their little thing and they compare and they talk about why they're named what they're named. And so it's kind of fun. But this is the same thing that goes on in Israel. Even today, people pick their names for particular reasons. So anyway, just... So why would you ever pick a name like Deceiver? Well, because he was born grabbing his brother's heel. Even so, so. Well, but, but that's what he did. And so because he is a heel grabber, it just happens to also mean Deceiver. That wasn't the intended purpose, but that was the result of it. So it would be like somebody here being named... Um, uh, you know, think of a name of something that has two meanings. And you're not thinking of that other meaning at all. But when somebody else says, why would you name your son that? Oh, I see. So it, just because something has two meanings, they're not even thinking of that at the time. He was born holding his brother's heel, and so they said he's a heel grabber. And then come to find out it literally fulfills itself in his name being a supplanter or a deceiver. So there you go. Um, but yeah, I, I understand, but you know, we do it too. We just don't realize we do it until after it's done, and then it's like, oh, I didn't think of that. You know, it's just the way. All right, go ahead, next one. Then Leah said, how fortunate, so she named him Gad. Okay, so th this one actually has kind of two meanings. It could either mean a troop, because I have a troop of children now, but it also means Gad. And if you're reading elsewhere in the Old Testament, it'll say, I think in Isaiah, it says, you mix wine to Gad, meaning to fortune. They're praising the gods of fortune, and that's where the name Gad. So if you see the word fortune elsewhere in the Bible. Some, some will translate it Gad, some will translate it fortune. If you see the word fortune, it's just his name. Okay, that doesn't mean that it's him, the son of Israel, but probably these people were from the tribe of Gad, and here they're fulfilling the name of their forefather in the fact that they're now praising fortune instead of praising the God. So you'll see these names that show up like that, but now he's got four wives. And actually, he's got two wives and he's got two concubines. And they never really are called wives. And one interesting thing, we're not going to go there now, but as you see the tribes mentioned, like when they're being blessed or when they're um, being arranged around the tabernacle, the sons that come from Rachel and Leah will take precedent over the sons that come from Bilhah and Zilpah. Just so you know, they'll be, in, they'll be named first. And I think it goes uh, Rachel and then Leah and then uh, Bilhah and Zilpah, but I, I, I may have that wrong. But anyway, they're always relegated as, uh, not secondary, but they're not listed first the way that the real mothers the, or the real wives of Jacob are. Anyway, just something to consider. And uh, there's people that do all kinds of studies on that kind of stuff, but it doesn't really interest me other than the fact that I know that they do that is the way that they, uh, uh, you know, list these tribes as they're going through the different blessings and things. Who, who did, did God do that? Is God the one who relegated them? Or is well, that no, that? everything is directed by the Lord ultimately, but it would be like for whatever reason, as far as, well, we'll go real quickly. We'll go to the book of Numbers and we'll see. Um, hang on, we'll go to Numbers. Where is it? Um, I can't wait till we get to the book of Numbers. Wow, is that fun. In Leviticus, unbelievable. But let's see here. We want to go to um, anoints the tabernacles. The sons are devoured. It's going to take a second to find us because you asked the question. We'll have to go there. Day of Atonement. Laws of, no, that's okay. Um, am, well, why am I in Leviticus if I want to be in Numbers? See, that's a problem is when you're in the entire wrong book. Um, all right, let's see here. Um, 
We've got the numbering of the tribes at the beginning, okay, and then what we're going to, oh, yeah, it says right here. Um, we'll go to just chapter 2, and it says here, um, uh, and the Lord spoke to Moses. I'll just read it real quickly. Every one of the children of Israel shall camp by his own standard. Beside the emblems of his father's house, they shall camp some distance from the tabernacle of meeting. On the east side, this is the Lord directing this, toward the rising of the sun, those of the standard of the forces of Judah shall camp according to their armies. Judah is first, all right? And it, it's indicating, let praise go first. They are the first camp to encamp. But there is a reason why Reuben, Levi, and Simeon, the first three actually born sons, are not listed first. There is a reason, we'll get to that uh, in a couple chapters. But uh, before we do, um, Judah is mentioned first, and that is the son of Leah. Okay, and then it goes from there. Uh, the son of Amidad shall be the leader of Judah. His army is 600, whatever. Okay, next one is Issachar. Okay, and Nathaniel, the son of Zuar, blah, blah, blah. Now, Issachar belongs to, um, let's see, where is he? I don't even know. He belongs to Leah again. All right, and then so, but anyway, I'm not going to go through all 12 of them. It would take us an hour to do that. But as you go through here, you will see them listed by the mother, okay, of the particular children. And so that's what's going on there. Let's see, we'll do one more. Zebulon belongs to um, Leah again. Okay, so Leah, Leah, Leah. Okay, and we're going to see that in the blessings and in the way they're arranged and everything. In that particular instance, that was the Lord directing it. Other ones, it might be Moses just blessed him and it just happened to be that he blessed him that way. Or maybe he was told to do his blessing that way. I don't know, or maybe it says and I just don't remember. But in that particular case where they're arranging the tribes around the tabernacle that was directed by the Lord. So, there you go. That answers your question. Um, I don't remember where they were, so please, go ahead. Leah's name Zilpah bore Jacob the second son. And then Leah said, Happy am I, for women will call me happy. So she named him Asher. Guess what Asher means? <laughs> Woohoo! Happy! We're going to go real quickly to the Psalms, and we'll just pick one out. Um, let's see here. Um, we're going to go... Uh, I'll try Psalm 1 or 2, but after that, then we're going to go to Psalm 119. All right. Um, read Psalm 1, 1. Blessed is the man. Blessed is the man, right there. Guess what the word blessed is right there? Asher. Okay. Blessed is the man. Happy is the man. All right. And if you go to Psalm 119, verse 1, it says, Blessed are the undefiled in the way. Asher. Okay. So, once again, blessed is happy. Happy is blessed. All right. And as you go through one, Psalm 119, the first eight verses all begin with the letter A. Okay. They're not all... Um, uh, the second one also is Esher, blessed. But as you go through, each of the first eight verses is A. Then you go to the, the second eight verses, 9 through, what is that, 9 through uh, 16. They will begin with the letter B or Bet. And then you go to Gimel, which is the 17 through 24, and they all begin with G. So that's called an acrostic. The entire psalm, all 176 verses, is based on the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. There's one octave for each letter of the alphabet, okay? And that's the way that's broken down, but it just happens to be the Asher happens to be mentioned first, okay? Blessed or happy is the man. So now you know something new, a little squiggle on your brain. Verse 14, please. Now in the days of the good harvest, Reuben went and found mandrakes in the field and brought them to his mother Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, please give me some of your son's mandrakes. But she said to her, is it a small matter for you to take my husband? And would you take my son's mandrakes also? You know, I, I, I would think Rachel would be saying to Leah, what is it? Isn't it well, you, you took my husband. Yeah, you would, but you know, it just it, she was the first wife and you know, she could have said you're married and so I'm going to step back from this and you know, once it was done, it was done. But, you know, there there's obviously regardless of the the jealousy between the two and who was right and who was wrong, there's there is a bitterness and there is a division between the two of them because of this. You're right, and I think the same thing when I hear that. But I try to empathize with Leah because she had this lazy eye that was all over the place. She wasn't good looking. Who wanted her? And she ends up married to a guy that really doesn't love her. So I try to I try my best to sympathize with Leah, even though Rachel's better looking and you know, whatever. <laughs> oh goodness. 